Hi, here we are. We're going to be learning Yechezkel, Perek Tet Zayin. The Shir, like all of our Shirim, are Le'ilu Nishvat Rechuleya, Bat Reb Chaim Tzvi, to be true Aliyah for her. And with that, we'll begin. So, um, this Perek is different than, very different than some of the other, excuse me, Prakim that we've learned. Um, its basis is a famous mashal that many of you are familiar with from the Haggadah. The mashal is of a child who was born to two parents from different nations who don't want her and who abandon her. And she's in the forest, a tiny infant, helpless, alone, filthy. And a patron finds her and takes care of her and raises her and brings, her, brings out her full potential. And then she betrays him. So this parable is, um, of course, a parable concerning the Jewish people and how Hashem took us from where we were in Egypt on the 49th level of Tuma, okay, and developed us and gave us Torah. And then in Yechezkel's time, he talks about the betrayal. So we'll begin. Vayhi devar Hashem elayle mor, Yechezkel says, and it was that Hashem spoke to me saying, Ben Adam, Hoda et Yerushalayim et to'avoteha. Let Yerushalayim know how it's distanced itself, how it's become an abomination. So the idea of the, the language used here, let her know. So this implies that we don't always know where we are. So there's um, a rule that some of you are familiar with. The angels are called omdim. They stay in one place. A person is holech. A person goes from moment to moment to new places spiritually and emotionally where they haven't been. So a person can have the illusion that the person they are today is the person they were five years ago, but it's not so. Because between now and five years past, you've made many choices and decisions. So you're not the same person. You're the person who was built on the basis of those choices and decisions. If your level was this and your level is still this, that's the result of many choices not to grow. It's not that no choices were made. So he's saying, let Yerushalayim know where she is. She may not know where she is. She may be so unself-aware as a group, as a people, that she has no consciousness. Okay, so let's take this further. Okay, v'yamarta, and say, Ko amar Hashem elokim li Yerushalayim, v'chotayich, v'moladatayich, v'eretz haknani avich, ha'amori v'yimech hachit, v'yimech hitit. So he says, tell her that this is what Hashem elokim says. Now I notice it says Hashem elokim. This tziruf has to do with Hashem's eternal self being expressed. So the source is Midas HaRachamim, but its expression is Midas HaDin. Okay, which means that, as we'll see at the end of the parak, all of the negativity, even the initial description of our being a To'eva, isn't coming out of Hashem Ki'ilu rejecting us permanently or absolutely, but is describing our situation and responding to our situation in order to bring us back. So he says, Yerushalayim, where you've dwelled and where you were born. Think about that. Where have you dwelled? Where were you born? So he's saying, where you dwelled was Egypt. Like the child we've just described. The, uh, the forest, the place that has nothing in the spiritual sense. And what, what brought you into the world? You started off in Eretz Canaan. What do we mean by this? Your parents, Avram, Sarah, they started from nothing, from nowhere. They had to bring themselves to Eretz Canaan, and everything else was done by Hashem. Avich he'amori mechachitit. You're acting... Your behaviors are such that you seem like a child who was born to parents from two different nations. And because they come from two different nations, 
Neither one of them want to take responsibility for you. Okay, so let's talk about the peoples who are under discussion. You act as though you come from the Amorites. The Amorites were considered one of the worst of the ancient nations. It says in the Torah, don't do what the Amorites do. The word Amor, of course, comes from the word Omar, which is to speak. So these are the people whose verbal expression, their way of, of expressing their inner lives outward, was corrupt in the ultimate sense. The Chitim. Who were the Chitim? So also amongst the nations of the Canaanites, they were also very low to the point that we find um, Rivka saying, how could I bear if my son will marry one of the Benot Chit? And it was self-understood. Yitzchak didn't debate and say, what's wrong with the Benot Chit? 